Coach, after last year with the triple post, uh, sorry, triple option, do you feel a need to pass more in this offense, or do you want to keep it down? No, we're always going to be balanced. I mean, if you look at us historically, offensively, we're almost uh, exactly 50-50. You know, a good offense is going to be one that can move the ball. So, you know, if we're better throwing it, we'll throw it a little bit more. If we're better running it, we'll run a little bit more. But I always believe that you have to have balance in the offense. You have to, you have, to have balance within your run game. You have to have balance within your pass game. And then you have to play to the strengths of your quarterback and your offensive line. At Coastal, I watched some of your film. You seem to have a power running game, even with the kind of the spread personnel and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Is that something you feel like the kind of running backs and stuff you suit, maybe adding that back into the Yeah, I mean, the, the number one run play in the offense has always been the zone read. Um, we have some really, really good athletic quarterbacks, so it would be kind of uh, counterproductive to take those guys out of that role. Um, but we're going to run the ball downhill. We're a power running team. You know, we're, if, even if we're running inside zone, we're going to try to get as many double teams as we can, try to knock the guys back. Uh, on the defensive line. The thing I love about our guys up front is they're really aggressive. Um, you know, they've learned how to fight and scrap and really come off the ball in the triple. So a lot of those things they're really good at. And, you know, you have to be able to establish a downhill run game to be able to get the quarterback to do all the RPO things and, you know, the zone read things and some of the quarterback run off of the inside zone. How did you go about figuring out Switching positions, guys like Tyler Cooks, he moves him to tight end. Like, that was that well, I mean, they haven't had a tight end here in 11 years. Right. You know what I mean? So we went through and we, you know, kind of went through some of the offseason things. We looked at who are the guys body wise that could do those type of things. And then, you know, put those guys in that situation. And, you know, like one of the other guys, Josh Tukes was out today. He was a little sick. But, like, he's a 6'5 kid who can run. He's got a little bit bigger body. Um, and so you got to find the body type first that could do the things that we're going to ask him to do. And then if you look at us historically, we're probably 60%, 11 personnel having a tight end on the field. So we have to create depth there, find those bodies. And then once you have those guys, you got to ask them to do things that they can do. You know, I don't know if Tyler's going to run down the middle of the field and catch benders you know, against Clemson. Uh, but he's tough. He can run. He'll hit people. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, you know, do some naked stuff. So, um, you know, we'll just, we'll, and we'll just continue to do that. We'll continue to evaluate different positions, and we'll cross-train a lot of guys. Um, you know, it's only the second day of practice. You already saw two offensive linemen go over and cross-train on defense. We'll do the same thing at wide receiver, nickel, you know, pass rushers as we get into our nickel stuff, third down stuff. So that's one of Coach Collins' big things is to be as multiple as you can with your personnel and to cross-train as many people as you can. That's just part of what we do. How big was it getting Tyler Davis? It seemed like he was a guy who was maybe even underutilized on a, on a team before and was one of the best tight ends in America last mm -hmm. year. And, Seems like a kind of perfect one-year rental weapon for you. Guys. Yeah, he's he's unbelievable. You know, he's a really really good player. He's an even better guy. You know, he bought right in. The guys love him. He you know he gets right in the mix. Um, he assumes a, a a leadership role. He's he's an older veteran guy. He's played a lot of football. He gave us headaches. You know, when he was at UConn, they can use him in a lot of different ways. They dumped him the ball. They put him down to see him in the next play. He's tough and he'll mix it up in the run game. Uh, so he was he was a great get for us. There's a lot Up of the front quarterbacks we talked to that said they'd like to throw the ball. Saying, <laughs> Which one doesn't? Right, but I'm just saying like, they, they were brought in here for a different system. Yep. Do you feel like that was some untapped talent that you can kind of – Man, they, you know, the, the misconception is that these are, you know, quarterbacks who are run guys who can't throw. If you just watched our practices the last two days, that's a fallacy. You know, those three guys can really throw the football. Now, they don't know what the heck they're doing, right? They're looking around, they might be looking the wrong way, or they, you know, they got a lot of things, you know, they're trying to, you know, change protections and bounce backside. I mean, you know, we're like an old school run and shoot offense, Warren Moon back, you know, back in the day. Um, so it's the same concepts, you know, and they're, they're having to read things on the run and, uh, you know, you know, step up in the pocket, but, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. Yesterday, Tobias changed the protection, looked to his left, didn't like it, stepped up in the protection, went backside. There was a seam ball backside that was being covered. He threw a back shoulder ball to the seam ball for about a 25-yard gain. That just doesn't happen if you can't throw and, you, and you're not a really good player. So my job is to just continue to bring these guys along, and all three of those guys are really, really good. What are you seeing up front? I, I know you have some, some nice guys coming back, and, and in particular with pass blocking. 
that's going to be the biggest challenge, right? You know, they had the, they had they were in a four point stance. They had their head down and they came charging off the ball. Um, and then even some of the pass pro stuff was more play action. And and uh, so you know, Keech, uh, Coach Key is one of the best coaches in the country. Um, and just so what we've seen over the last two days are those guys just growing and growing and growing and growing and just understanding how to set, how to be patient, not to try to knock somebody backwards on pass pro, but to let the pass pro come to them. Um, so their development is going to be over the course of the spring. But, you know, we look like a spread football team today. I mean, you, you know, you get out there, we look like a spread team. You know what I mean? For a team that has been a triple option team for the last 10 years, if you didn't know that and you just came and you watched our practice today, you'd say, that's a pretty good spread team. So, you know, that's a tribute to the guys up front. We don't bust a lot of assignments. You know, the guys are really studying. They did a great job in the offseason of understanding what we do. Um, we're playing, we're executing at a high level. Our pace is great. Um, our guys are really buying into playing fast, which is a cornerstone of everything that we do on offense. So, you know, I'm really, really happy with the first two days. Maybe one or two more for Coach Pat Moog. What, what was your, the, the process like of the time you had within the offseason just to, to teach the offense and, and what, like, what kind of things were you doing as far I as mean, it, it was everything from, uh, you know, teaching formations, teaching alignments, you know, teaching the wideouts where to line up. These are the different formations. These are the alignments. This is the back alignment. Okay, to a lot of defensive understanding. You know, so we taught a the great offense is going to be when the combination of your offensive understanding and your defensive understanding meets. And for a quarterback, once he understands what the defense is trying to do and what they're trying to take away, it's really easy for him to manipulate the defense. You know, so he's got to have an un unbelievable understanding of what we do, but even a deeper understanding of defenses so that he knows where to go with the ball. Once he does that, it's really easy. He just steps back there and throws it. Hey, Coach, tomorrow is going to be a hard day for the whole football team all together. As we have them come to the guidance and being able to be there to talk to them, what is your message going in? Because, you know, by the end of the day, it's really going to start coming to the mm -hmm. what's going to happen tomorrow. So I told him in the last meeting, nothing in life is going to prepare you for what just happened. Okay, there's nothing that can prepare you for that. I lost my mom right after college. I was about their age. There's nothing that can prepare you for that. The healing comes when we stay together and we mourn together and we play together and we shed a tear together and we bond together and we come together, okay, and we put one foot in front of the next. And when you don't think that you can put one foot in front of the next, then you help your buddy put one foot in front of the next and one day at a time, the healing starts to happen. And it's gonna be a very, really hard day. We're gonna go up there and pay tribute to, to BA. And he was, I mean, in the short time that I was here, he was such an amazing kid. I would walk through the locker room all the time. He'd be there with a big smile on his face. Now he was dead tired and he was, you know, gas from running stadium steps or whatever. Um, but he always had a big bear hug for you, a big smile. Um, and so that's the thing that I'm gonna miss and our guys are gonna miss, but you know, by being together and, and, and going through the mourning process. And Coach Collins doing an unbelievable job now of keeping these guys together and having them understand exactly what this process uh, entails is going to help them and the next hurdle that comes in their life the next time they lose somebody. You know, it's just so really unfortunate. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Appreciate it.